Good morning and good afternoon. My name is Peter Chang. I'm from the Institute of Chinese Studies, University of Malaya, here in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Greetings to all of you from Malaysia. I wish to begin by thanking the organizing committee and the China Academy of Social Sciences for the invitation and the honor to participate in this very important meeting. The title for my presentation today is Turning Crisis into a Shared Future of Opportunities in a Democratic Way. As we enter into the second decade of the 21st century, the world is facing a set of distinct yet interconnected crises. The COVID pandemic, an economic slowdown, and a degrading environment. These crises are all happening at the same time, and it is subjecting the global community to enormous pains and strains. We can and we must turn these negative challenges into a shared future of positive possibilities. But to achieve this, we have to stay committed to the inclusive, peaceful, and pluralistic ethos of the democratic way. Even as we meet today, the world is still battling against the COVID-19 pandemic. Over the past two years, this deadly disease has taken a heavy toll on every one of us. The rapid spread of the coronavirus has exposed how vulnerable we are and how unprepared the international community was in responding to this global pandemic. In fact, we have failed to support one another. Vaccine nationalism, for example, has denied many, especially those in the developing world, of the much needed inoculation. The global community can and should do better in making sure that all of us, the poorest in particular, have access to the vaccine required to overcome the pandemic. Looking ahead, we got to work together to strengthen our global public health system. In this regard, China's launch of the Health Silk Road is an important initiative. By stepping up to aid the less developed countries in training medical personnel and setting up medical infrastructure, China is helping the world to become better prepared in facing the next pandemic. The COVID pandemic has also rattled the world economy, disrupted supply chain, and stalled global manufacturing and international trade. The pandemic-induced economic slowdown has aggravated pre-existing inequity between the rich and the poor countries of the world. The international community can and should work together to narrow the wealth gap between the have and the have not. On this account, China's success in eradicating abject poverty is an exemplary model for the world. China's promotion of socialism with Chinese characteristics and President Xi's vision of common prosperity for all are formally that can be readapted globally so as to bring about a more equitable world economic order. In fact, the Belt and Road Initiative has already generated significant momentum, propelling developing countries in Asia and beyond towards greater social economic self-reliance. Last month, at the COP26, world leaders met at Glasgow to forge a unified response to the ecological disaster threatening planet Earth. Indeed, as a human family, we got to jointly work to address the natural calamities jeopardizing our individual and collective well-being. And more importantly, we must do so for the sake of our future generations. In this regard, Beijing's pledge to stop building new overseas coal plants is a vital step towards reducing global carbon emission. Furthermore, China's innovative breakthrough 
in green technology and renewable energies, among other things, will help redirect the world towards a more sustainable model of growth and to cultivate a way of life that is more in harmony with Mother Nature. Today's crisis actually presents to the world a unique moment in history where we can and should all work in unison to turn these negative challenges into positive opportunities to build a community with a shared future for humankind. But to actualize these potentials, the global community must embrace three core democratic principles. First, the democratic principle of inclusiveness. Our world is an enormously diverse human family. In building a community of shared future, we must take into account all the voices represented by our many divergent constituents. Every country and every member, big and small, rich and poor, ought to be accorded a seat in the Global Roundtable as we work together to determine our common destiny. Second, the democratic principle of peace. In a pluralistic milieu, Disputes and conflicts are inevitable, but this must be dealt with democratically and peacefully through open consultation and dialogue. In the current big power rivalry, however, unfortunately, the incumbent superpowers attempt to resolve dispute by containing another country's rights is against the spirit of democracy. To ensure peace and stability, the global community must stand united in renouncing and rejecting the use of force as a means to settle conflicts. Third, the democratic principle of pluralism. Even united in confronting common crises, the human family remains invariably diverse as we continue to hold peculiar cultural norms and belief systems. It is important to recognize humanity's plurality and accept that the world's manifold civilizations may choose to undertake distinct pathway towards actualizing our vision of a community of shared future. Indeed, a key feature of the democratic way of life is the ability to hold in balance the unity and diversity tension where different religious order and political system can coexist alongside each other. To conclude, today, a set of crises, namely the pandemic and economic slowdown and a degrading environment is defining humankind's common fate. But we can and should turn these exigencies and crises into opportunities to build a community of shared future of health, equity, and harmony. To realize this, we got to embrace the inclusive, peaceful, and pluralistic ethos of the democratic way of life. In this quest for unity, we must continue to celebrate our diversity, where the world's diverse civilization can coexist harmoniously as one human family. Thank you very much.